right? If you see here, you could you could probably notice that you know in the polygon case, you have the medial axis that sort of passes through in the middle, but then there are some there are certain um, other uh, spokes that are piercing through the object. The um, medial axis will will not pierce through the object, right? So that's why we said you could approximate the medial axis with a with a Voronoi diagram, and there are many many algorithms to to do that in a discrete setting, right? So we studied a lot of things um, today and even yesterday. I thought I'd have one slide to sort of connect the dots. These are all somewhat related to each other, especially the sign distance field that we looked at yesterday in the implicit setting, uh, the medial axis, uh, the Voronoi diagram, right? So this slide sort of summarizes uh, what we have here. So you have shape at one hand, the shape is the boundary of a solid, and uh, you have its medial axis, uh, and it's the, the SDF of the shape, right? The shape and the medial axis are related. I could solve the Eichner equation or explicitly compute the SDF. Uh, that's gonna derive the SDF from its shape. Or if I want to go back, I can take a zero level set of the SDF and recover the shape. On the other hand, I have the medial axis and I can compute the medial axis or at least approximate the medial axis using the Voronoi diagram. There are of course other techniques to calculate the medial axis as well. For example, you know, the uh, maximal ball is the basic definition of a medial axis. And with the, with the medial axis, so medial axis is a reduced representation of a surface. As you can see, it's a one dimensional, it, it is one dimension less than the original dimension, original dimension of the shape. So if I store the radius of the maximal ball at every point on the medial axis, I can recover the shape uh, with, with the reconstruction. So I have to take a union of all those balls and I can get the surface back. Then the SDF and, and the medial axis are also related. The medial axis can be computed by taking a local maxima of the SDF. So remember, we talked about it yesterday that the you notice the blue point, the blue regions in this SDF, and the highest values in this mountain of sign distance field corresponds to the medial axis, and that is exactly the locus of the local maxima. So you connect the highest point of this mountain and that is precisely the medial axis, right? And uh, you can of course construct the SDF given its medial axis. Again, you need to know the, uh, the ball radius and that would, um, that would help you recover its SDF. So in a sense, these, you know, these three, represent, three representations, the explicit shape, its medial axis or Voronoi diagram, and the SDF are related. And we also know that the, the Voronoi diagram and the Delaunay triangulation are also related because they are dual of each other, right? So I hope, I hope all of this makes a little bit of a sense now. And uh, that's, that's very much about Voronoi diagram that I wanted to talk. So anything, so, so I think we have now the next topic of surface reconstruction, which is the last topic for today, but any questions till now on Voronoi diagram or uh, the Lone triangulation or in general? Uh, so, uh, so like we have discussed Voronoi diagrams, say for 2D shapes, we'll also have for 3D and other dimensions. Like that. Yes, they can be yes, you can define Voronoi diagram. In that case, Voronoi diagram will have polyhedron. Voronoi regions would be polyhedron. Okay. In in three D, for example. And if you have uh, if you for points, it is polyhedra. And then uh, if you have three D lines or planes uh, between plane and a line, it it would be a paraboloid. And then you can have those curved surfaces. It's a collection of curved and planar patches. Uh, so, yeah. like, just uh, it is identical to how we analyze for 2D. Sorry? 
uh, sort of identical or you can say uh, similar to how yeah, yeah, that's for two D as it no real yes yes the concepts are the concepts are similar yeah the concepts are similar and it is defined usually defined for n dimensional space uh, there is a very nice book by Okabe et al um, if you are interested in Voronoi diagrams that gives you a excellent background on Voronoi diagrams so can you please write the uh, I think oh okay so that one I don't I don't have it in the uh, references but I can add that but um, you know if I were to just uh, let me let me write uh, I I don't quite remember the name of the book but I know the author's name it is uh, Okabe it's a, oh, this is a book by oh, Okabe. at all so you if you if you search you. okabe you you will get that book name but i'll i'll add later on i'll add that to the slides as well thank you sir. all right okay so let's let's come to the last topic for today which is uh surface reconstruction and uh this is an interesting topic because uh you know you have uh usually if you capture data from the real world and let me come back to what i discussed yesterday at the start is we usually want to represent geometry digitally and then also reconstruct the shape uh, and uh, we usually have to capture data from the real world because uh, that makes more sense right i mean we, we want to analyze real world data um, so when you capture data through various sensors there are there are different artifacts in that in that uh, data and um, some of these are you know you may have non-uniform sampling density so if you look at this signal uh, which is you know you can think of a shape maybe the, the sample points are denoted in, as dots uh, these dots may be uh, non-uniformly sampled and that poses a problem because it see what I get is dots so I have to connect these dots to make a shape um, if there are larger gaps in the data, the sampling density is not uniform, then it becomes very difficult to see which dots are connected to which other dots. There may not be a clear cut um, topology, connectivity information between the dots. Add to it that there could be noise uh, in the data set. The points may not exactly lie on the surface because these sensors have their own limits. Some of the sensors will not work great in low lighting conditions, right? Uh, they may, they may, they may be more accurate uh, at some points and less accurate at other points. So there are different, you know, limits uh, of these sensors. Then there may be outliers. Um, there may be outliers in the data, so points that do not really belong to the surface but are still captured. Um, because of errors, because of sensor um, errors, or you know, uh, some temporal incoherence in the lighting conditions or anything else. Then there are, um, there could be misaligned scans, because usually if it's a bigger object, you would want to scan it from multiple sides and merge those scans. That is, you capture points, you, you capture points from one side, and then you capture from another side, and then another side. And then you would want to merge them, align them together. And this alignment uh, can cause problems because sometimes this alignment may not be perfect. And, you know, these misaligned scans uh, will then result in overlapping points that may be somewhat not, somewhat, you know, uh, they may have a gap in between. Uh, then there could be missing data. For example, there could be occlusions. So if I'm scanning something, um, there are some there could be some occlusions that prevented me from scanning part of the part of the shape so these are all problems um, with data captured through various sensors so this overarching problem of surface reconstruction tries to solve some of these uh, problems and surface reconstruction has come a long way uh, today we are also looking at you know deep learning based surface reconstruction uh, because we know that look certain shapes should should be like uh, you know 
uh, like in a certain way. So maybe there is some learning that can happen um, in reconstructing a shape. But classically, um, you know, uh, there are purely geometric based reconstructions that have been used and there are certain very, very nice, very well known algorithms. And we will discuss two of the algorithms today. And if time permits, I might, I might, uh, you know, go through maybe, maybe a couple more. So usually the input um, for a surface reconstruction could be a set of points or cross sections, a defective mesh. And what I mean by a defective mesh is that let's say part of the mesh uh, missing, missing data, missing triangles from the mesh or um, noisy data in the mesh, noisy mesh, um, or it could be depth maps. Are, are anybody, is anybody familiar with depth maps here? What are depth maps or RGBD, RGBD images? Anybody knows what, what are depth maps? I'm, I can bet that some of you have own uh, sensors to capture depth maps without knowing that you have such a powerful sensor in your hand. You might, you might as well be looking at it right now. A lot of cell phones today come with depth sensors, especially the new ones. If you have like three, four, five, six cameras in your phone, the no, I'm not talking about light, LIDARs, um, yeah, LIDAR is like a more expensive side of, you know, point capturing device, but LIDAR is not depth maps. The Kinect is a depth map, yes, Abhishek. A Kinect is a depth, is a depth capturing device, but again, Kinect is bulky. Today, the depth, depth capturing devices uh, are part of your mobile phone. If you notice, if you read, if you have a newer phone and you, you may notice that you may notice that um, you may have a depth camera in your phone. And if you have a depth camera, then your camera is essentially capable of capturing a depth map of the scene. Uh, a depth map is basically just like an image, a photograph, but instead of capturing colors for every pixel, it captures the depth, could be in meters, uh, the depth from the camera center to the subject. Right, so for example, if you're photographing a table, then the depth map would be the image of the table with every pixel storing the depth from the camera to, to that point in the table projected from that pixel. So you connect a line array going from the camera center, connecting that pixel and out into the onto the table. Wherever it intersects the table, that distance from the camera to the table is stored at that pixel. That is a depth map, okay? And usually these cameras also have, you know, you, you probably, you, you, all of you will have a RGB camera. So together we call it an RGBD image. RGB, then red, green, blue, and D for depth. So there are, there are, there are with the advent of Kinect, Microsoft Kinect, there have been a lot of focus on how could you use the Kinect to construct the 3D scene um, by stitching different depth maps together and coloring them with the, uh, with the color image. Okay. Okay. So, um, so that's, uh, that's one. The output of such a surface reconstruction is usually a mesh. So um, we are mostly in interested in creating a mesh out of points and um, of course also colorizing them. You know, I can also briefly discuss, uh, uh, you know, the, Multi-view stereo. If some of you are interested uh, in in, uh, in discussing what is multi-view stereo algorithm, I can give an overview of of such an algorithm if time permits. So, the output could be a mesh, a parametric surface. In some cases, I might want to I might have uh, point data and I might want to fit, uh, you know, a CAD surface. For example, I want 
to have you know planar sections um, from a building scan let's say I might want to fit a CAD surface to it or a parametric surface perhaps which gives me more you know smoother uh, surfaces but a mesh is usually what I want at the end of the day usually right so that's that's the output so <clears throat> Two, two algorithms are we, we are going to discuss today. The first one is the RBF uh, reconstruction. RBF stands for radial basis functions. And let me also then uh, see if I can change the. That's fine. So an RBF reconstruction is a is a global. Uh, it gives gives you a global globally smooth surface and um, you have globally supported basis functions phi x equals to um, you know uh, uh, phi x equals to x here for example and um, mod of x and um, basically given a uh, given a point you have a given a point cloud pi you want to construct an implicit function f so most of these algorithms work with implicit functions and we have already discussed implicit functions uh, yesterday so you will find that implicit functions find a great application when it comes to surface reconstruction a lot of algorithms use implicit because implicits are very powerful you know uh, maybe we didn't discuss yesterday but implicit functions uh, very well handle the topology of the underlying surface changes in topology are very well captured in implicit so this is the form of an RBF implicit function, and um, this is what we want to recover. Okay, so we have we are given a set of points B i, and uh, this is my objective. You could say objective in a sense that the final function that I want um, to represent my uh, surface. And remember. You could think of this to be similar to sine distance function, but the values are not distances here. The values are some numbers, but I'm interested in the zero level set here. So while the distances are not, dis the, the values are not distances, the zero level set represents the surface that I'm interested in. So from points, I want to go to this implicit function and then take its zero level set and done. By the way, today's lab, um, is going to be interesting. You, we will go through, you know, some of these concepts uh, in Python and using the GL. So anyway, <clears throat> so fx uh, is a polynomial px plus a combination of um, of RBF functions defined over each defined defined around each point pi. Okay. So I think some abuse of some, some some notational differences here. I think this point cloud pi should be xi. I, yeah, I think that. But this pi, please read it as, as xi because in the expression below, I think I made a type typological error here. So you have um, lambda, the unknowns here are the parameter coefficients of the polynomial, and px is just a polynomial. It could be a linear polynomial, or I think it's most most likely a linear polynomial in this case. So c1x plus c2y plus c3z plus c4. So you have four coefficients of this polynomial. And then you have this radial basis function phi, uh, which is defined around xi. So you take at point x, you take the distance from x and xi, and then um, the radial basis function is going to give you the magnitude of this, of this um, the vector. The unknowns are the coefficient c and then lambda i's because you need to wait. It's a weighted combination. It's a, it's a weighted combination of these the radial basis functions. The lambda i's are unknowns and the c's are unknown. And because uh, you're going to um, be taking a level set zero, so remember that for every point p, p we, we want an interpolating surface, right? We want a surface that passes through that point. And if I'm interested in the zero level set of this implicit function, then that that says that every point pi is sitting on this level set. So what would be the value of at these points? The function value would be exactly zero because you know these points are sitting on the level set. And any point on the level set zero 
will have a z level value of zero. So, but that leads to a problem because you know, if effect if f of pi is zero, then you know, f of pi is zero, then in that case uh, I have a trivial solution and it doesn't work out. So I need to then um, what I do is that I take certain points in the positive direction and certain points in the negative direction of these uh, points pi. And usually in these point reconstruction problems, I not only have the point but also a normal also a normal vector associated with each point. So basically I know what is my surface orientation. And this is true for many, many sensors, especially if you if you do a um, RGBD reconstruction, you know, you know what is the normal vector because you are mostly capturing from the outside or there could be other clues that could tell you what is the normal vector at each point. So it is okay to assume that every point comes with its normal vector. And then with RBF, what you do is that you just nudge that point, PI in the positive. So, so basically you say PI plus epsilon times normal vector and pi minus epsilon times normal vector. So basically I'm moving a little bit epsilon, the epsilon distance above and below that point along the normal direction. And I get two points, one positive, one negative, right? So I could then say that I moved epsilon distance. So I could feed, I could say that, you know, my fx is epsilon in that case. And then that would help me solve this. Uh, solve this problem because if I just have the zero points, I, I'll not be able to solve it because the constraints will will result in a trivial solution f x equals to zero and the system will collapse. So that's um, that's that, that, that's the that's the that's the system of linear equations uh, that I get from RBF formulation. I have the matrix um, that consists of phi and the polynomial p with unknowns lambdas and and the coefficient c appearing in the vector, which is equal to you know the function value f, which in this case would be you know whatever distances you moved along the normal direction. Uh, you you need not move everybody all the points epsilon. You could move epsilon one, epsilon two, whatever you want. And but that epsilon will come here, whatever is that function value you think will come here. And for the polynomials, you have zero uh, in that row. So you have this linear system of equations uh, that you can solve. And um, and let's take a look at some of the results. So let's say we have this bunny mesh. And for now, let's ignore the mesh and only consider the points. Um, you, you have this. RB, linear RBF where you know the RBF function was a linear function of fi r equals to r. You could change the RBF function to be a cubic. In that case, you get a smoother uh, surface, but you know there is some shrinkage of of the of the bunny. You could regularize the cubic RBF, um, and that gives a better. Uh, better appearance, but you know, um, RBF RBFs are is an old method, and uh, you know it was very well known uh, earlier, which was later replaced by another method, which we can look at now. But any anybody has any questions on the RBF, we can quickly take a look at that. All right. So so that was RBF, and um, and then came the uh, Poisson uh, reconstruction method. That's a very um, it's it's a it's a, it's a very interesting method again. And um, Poisson reconstruction uh, tries to recover the shape from a set of oriented points. So again, every point has a direction, a normal vector associated with it. And um, essentially, you know. You want to recover the shape using uh, you solve for the indicator function. 
So what is an indicator function of a shape? The indicator function of a shape says that um, if a point P is inside the shape, uh, its indicator function is one. If it is not inside, then uh, indicator function is zero, right? So basically you want to recover its indicator function. And if you do that, you have recovered the shape of the object. So let's see how it is done. So essentially, um, if, you're, if you're given a, if you're given a, sorry for that, I'm trying to minimize one window here. Um, right, anyway, but, but uh, so if you're given um, n uh, gradient data part, that is a point and its gradient, that is its normal, uh, you want to find out a function f, but that's, the gradient of the function at the given data point is the given gradient. So, so grad f of xi equals to gi. This is what you want to set up by, right? You are given xi and gi. xi is a point and gi is the normal vector or the gradient at that point. So you want to recover a function f such that the gradient of f at xi equals to gi, right? And the hope, we hope that while doing so, we will have, uh, we will define a, a surface that will also work out for other points other than xi. Remember, xi are just a set of points, a discrete set of points. So you could do, you, what we could do is we could solve the normal equation uh, by taking the gradient of the above equation. We, we say that the, um, the, the gradient, um, of gradient of f um, equals to the gradient of g i. Uh, but let's take a look at an observation is that the normal field n, remember we are given the normals n or the g i values. Um, the normal is gradient of the smoothed, um, smoothed indicator function, right? So, so the indicator function has a discontinuity. The indicator function has is, is c minus one because look look what happens at the boundary at the boundary inside the boundary I have one and outside the boundary I have zero so there's a sudden jump and that's a c minus one uh, continuity or in other words a discontinuity a positional discontinuity so we can assume that the given normals are sampled from the smoothed uh, version of the indicator function. And, and you can imagine that a smoothed version of an indicator function is, is something that gradually goes from zero to one rather than a step, right? So you have a smooth function that, that smoothly transforms from zero to one at the boundary so that the normal is a smooth because, you know, if you have a indicator function, the normals uh, you know, would be difficult to define. So let, let's call these, this is smoothed version of uh, indicator function as the x hat s, where s is the surface we want to recover. So then um, instead of solving the equation above, I, I solve the equation, I want to recover the smoothed version of the, of the indicator function. So, 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 so gradient of xs, equals to n is what I want to solve. And I solve it using the Poisson equation for excess, right? So, so the, so grad square excess is uh, grad dot n, where n is the set of given normals, right? There are certain implementation details, which I have skipped here. There's a very well-known paper by Kazdan et al. Uh, it's maybe in 90s, published in 90s. But that gives all the necessary details. Essentially, you you perform, you solve this lap, uh, Poisson equation on an adaptive grid, grid in 3D, uh, for example, an octree-like like grid, um, and you do a solution, an accurate solution, only along the boundary. And and these are some of the uh, outputs of a Poisson of a Poisson uh, reconstruction. So basically, you have this point cloud, and then you recover a triangle mesh. How do, how do I recover a triangle mesh here? So I create, when I solve it, 
I let's say I solve it on a uniform grid, a volumetric grid, and at every point in the volumetric grid, I compute an implicit function value f. f. So, so you see that when I solve this Poisson equation, I solve it on a on a domain on a on a volumetric domain. So I have a grid, and then for for every grid point, I calculate uh, I solve this Poisson equation. And then once I have that grid uh, solved, I take a zero level set using marching cubes. We discussed marching cubes yesterday, right? So the marching cubes will then give me a triangle mesh. So the, the triangle mesh is from marching cubes. Okay, so that's, that's Poisson uh, reconstruction. There are many, many more reconstruction algorithms and I could have included more, but I believe I just wanted to sample, uh, you know, two prominent algorithms and there are many more algorithms uh, for reconstruction, but we've done no? some samples. So these are some of the references uh, pointing to some of these algorithms. For example, um, the last one is uh, by Kazan et al., um, which is a which is one of the you know papers. Okay, it's 2006, not 90. This is even recent. So Poisson surface reconstruction. Anyway, uh, questions we are, we are done for today, but I can I can stay back for some minutes and we can take questions here. And if you want, I can, you know, if you want, I can discuss something else or if maybe we can take questions if, if people want questions. So uh, just one quick question. Yes. Hello. Yeah. So in the RBF yes, yes, reconstruction, uh, polynomial is added uh, as a regularization? Something that smooths the surface, or yeah, right. something that yeah, yeah, yeah. avoids overfitting. So, so polygon is uh, is 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 to add uh, smoothness. If I if I'm not wrong, it's, oh. it's used to add smoothness. What happens sometimes is there is an additional regularization that is added to phi here. Um, the last one, I haven't included the regularization uh, equation here, but that is, you know, so in the same equation, if I add another term that says plus k times lambda i, uh, that adds a regularizer to it. Because, you know, this system of equation, uh, if you can't solve it, then, then that becomes a problem. Numerically, if you can't solve it. So, but pi, I, I believe, is, is, is only to make the surface smoother. Okay. And uh, sorry, one more, one last question from my side. Yes, yes, so sure. uh, here uh, the estimates of normal also can be noisy, right? In both these algorithms, you do need an estimate of the normal. Yeah, that's true. That's true because you can't trust okay. you can't trust these sensors. So these normal estimates. Uh, can be noisy, so in many algorithms we do smooth out the normals before okay. we plug them into these. Because you're right, the the noise, the the uh, you know noise could be present both in the position and the normal. So, for example, you know when you calculate these depth images, these depth images have are are noisy uh, in the periphery of the image. And also, if you move back, that is, sorry, if you move forward, the further away you are from the sensor, the more noisy they are. So if right. you have a wall that extends in the Z right. direction, the estimate of points further away uh, right. would be very, no very, very noisy. In fact, noisy right. to the extent that you can't use it. So oh, okay. the most accurate estimates of point position is using uh, laser sensors, LiDAR sensors. Right. Participants, questions? Questions, I believe. Anything that wasn't clear, I could. I have there are there are a few minutes. I don't I don't think I could start a new topic because that would go over time. 
but let's let's stick to questions now but of course i can i can point you to different methods that you can look at for example uh, you know there, there there is an increasing body of work uh, so so there was an algorithm called kinect fusion uh, if you, if some of you have worked with kinect uh, sensor there there have been a body of research as to how would you how to reconstruct a static scene by taking a lot of uh, depth images from the kinect sensor so you take the kinect sensor in your hand and move around into the scene and then the kinect fusion algorithm will fuse all the depth map and the and the color images photographs into a single scene live in real time and reconstruct the entire 3d scene so that is known as kinect fusion and it uses a modified version of distance field all known as tsdf uh, it's called a truncated signed distance field truncated signed distance field tsdf and the modification is very simple it says that you know you want a we want a narrow band distance field because so what is known what is meant by narrow band is that around the zero level set you don't want to go further away let's say you you want only uh, the, the relevant distances are 10 cm from the zero level set because you expect that whatever changes happens in the surface uh, happen within that 10 cm range so you truncate the distance field up to 10 cm 10 cm and you don't really care what happens beyond plus 10 10 cm and above above 10 cm and below 10 cm so you don't really care what it is so it's a truncated sign distance field the distance values are correct only up to plus minus 10 cm and 10 cm is just a example here okay so you use tsdf um, for real time update update of these depth frames so you accumulate all the depth frames in a single uh, ts large very large tsdf function and then you do a you, you you calculate a um, you know mesh at the end of the day so that's that's a, a kind of fusion algorithm and then well i haven't ex explained any algorithm here but that's the idea behind a kind of fusion the if you are interested what's happening in research in this area uh, the interest nowadays is on um, dynamic reconstruction that is how do i capture and represent moving objects so for example a dancer how can i capture the the real time four dimensional performance of a dancer given that i have some sensors around maybe cameras or multiple depth sensors how do i fuse store transmit and display a 4d performance and this is also known as volumetric video capture you can take a look at that and some of the algorithms that came up in the last 3 4 years uh, one of the fundamental algorithms in that was called dynamic fusion which was based on kinect fusion so kinect fusion is static and dynamic fusion is the dynamic version of kinect fusion uh, and then there have been various improvements on the dynamic fusion algorithm okay so i think with that i will stop it's already noon um, more questions please ask me i can stay back for a few minutes otherwise i think we can call it a day